What is up my aesthetic boys? It's Fresh back with another video. This is one that I keep on getting more requests for so I have to give it to you. Almost one half hour of Entitled Parents. Dollar store customer demands she buys my drink because she doesn't like other brands. When I was 17, my senior year of high school, I used to work at the dollar store in my town. It was a proper dollar store. Literally everything sold there was a dollar or less. For the most part, the people who came in weren't a problem. We didn't have a lot of problems with theft, and generally people were pretty nice. Of course, there always has to be an exception. Over longer school breaks like Christmas vacation, I would usually try and pick up extra shifts. I was trying to save up for a road trip with my friends, and my home life wasn't really the best, so I was okay spending more time at work. Half the time, I was just standing behind the cash register anyway. One day, sometime between Christmas and New Year's, I had picked up an extra late shift after my regular shift during the day. I was scheduled to work from 12 to 6, and then the late shift from 8 to 2 when we closed. Usually, late night wasn't that busy, so I tried to pick them up when I was able to. Because I knew I'd be at work for a full 12 hours, I came prepared that day. I brought some snacks and stuff, but most importantly, I brought a can of Monster Energy. I haven't had one of those in a while, but I lived off of them in high school. Not the healthiest habit by any means, but hey, I needed to be alert and all that. So there I was, nearing 1am at this dimly lit dollar store, pretty much doing nothing. I was feeling alright, so I hadn't opened my can of Monster yet, and it was just sitting next to me at the register. You can probably see where this is going. In comes this woman, kind of on the larger side, and she looked pretty irritated by something. Who knows what. So she walks in at a brisk pace and starts poking around the aisles. It wasn't a big store, so it was pretty easy to tell where she was. Eventually, she makes her way to the back of the store where the drink cases were. I see her reach in, grab a bottle, look at it in disgust, and then put it back. She did this for about 4 or 5 bottles before finally picking one with a shrug. She starts to head toward me, so I sit up to check her out. I need to preface this interaction with a brief description of the kinds of products we sold. Everything was off-brand. We had just about nothing from a mainstream brand, and even if we had a brand named Candy, it was in absurdly small portions. It's a dollar store, what do you expect? So anyway, this woman comes to the register and hoists her 2 liter bottle of Diet Dr. Popper or some knockoff like that onto the counter. As I reach for the bottle to scan it, she notices the can of Monster next to the register. EM is entitled mom, me is, well, me. Me. Is that going to be it today, ma'am? EM. Uh, actually, I'll take that as well, pointing at the can of Monster. Me. A little confused. I'm, I'm sorry, what? Entitled mom. The Monster. I'll take that too. As she says this, she starts taking two singles out of her purse. I kind of freeze on the spot, unsure of what to do, and just manage to let out, me, oh no, that's mine, it's not part of the store, entitled mom, but it's in here, it's sitting right there, what's the problem? Me, I brought it in here, we don't even sell monster. Mind you, this drink cost like three dollars, there's no way a big can of this could be in a dollar store, entitled mom. Oh, come on, my son loves that stuff. She continues to push the two single bills towards me. Me. No, seriously, it's not part of the store. It's not for sale. It's my drink. Entitled Mom. It's not like you need it. Just take the money and I'll be on my way. It's a store. That's how stores work. She said the last part a little sarcastically as if I didn't understand the concept of a monetary transaction at a store. At this point, I realize she's being serious. I had hoped she was just making a bad joke before, but she is actually trying to buy my drink. Kind of weird, but no big deal really. Yet. Yeah. As I continue to insist that it's not a stock item, she refuses to back down. She keeps going on about how grumpy her son is, and that she's just trying to make him happy. She starts to add that she couldn't find one anywhere else in the store, to which I replied that we still didn't sell them. Here we are. Me, a skinny 17 year old just trying to save up money by working a bad job at a dollar store, her, a large red-faced woman yelling in my face, shoving a couple bills at me over a damn energy drink at 1am. Comical at best, terrifying at worst. I wish I had a manager to call, but I was the only one in the store. Entitled Mom. You have to be the worst cashier I have ever seen. You refuse to sell a drink for a damn kid? What is wrong with you? Me. Miss, it's not part of our inventory. I can't sell it to you. I'm sure your son will understand. Entitled Mom. No, he won't. He's a kid. Do you have no respect? I couldn't even take her seriously at this point. I told her I would call the police if she didn't pay and leave, so she threw her bottle of Doc Thunder on the ground and stormed out in a huff towards her beat-up minivan. Grumpy kid in the car or not, it wasn't her drink to buy. 
Honestly, if she had just paid me 4 or $5 for it, I probably would have sold it to her. I didn't really need it. But to be yelled at by this woman, to have a single dollar bill be shoved in my face? It was about principle at that point. It's probably for the better that he didn't get the monster anyway. That stuff can really mess kids up. This isn't the craziest or most aggressive entitled mom the world has ever seen, but it shows an interesting side of the EM mindset that I hadn't seen before. Not only does she feel like she should be able to buy the cashier's drink, even after being told that it was just a personal item and not for sale, she insists that since it's a dollar store, the price must be one dollar. EM didn't try and get OP arrested, and it was just a grumpy altercation at a dollar store, late at night. For all I know, the kid she referenced wasn't real and she was just trying to use it as a sympathy card to get the cashier to take a loss on her beverage. Either way, I hope she found out that at least some parts of the world don't revolve around her and her kid. Entitled Mom starts a petition to get a sandbox removed because her daughter doesn't like it. This is one about an entitled parent I observed over many years. I'm not sure why nobody stood up to her, I guess people didn't want to start drama. Maybe they were afraid. Who knows. This isn't really about one huge thing, but just a big entitled pattern of behavior. I'm a mom of two, and both of my kids went to the same daycare when they were little. It wasn't a big daycare, there were maybe 20 other kids there. All the parents had met each other, and I knew some of them pretty well from playdates and the like. Everyone knew exactly who this EM was. For the story, let's call her Emily. Emily had a young daughter in the daycare, and for all I ever saw, she seemed like a really sweet little girl. It's unfortunate that her mom wasn't the same way. Emily, our entitled protagonist, basically treated everyone like the world revolved around her daughter. The parents would sometimes volunteer to bring in special snacks, and even though Emily never seemed to bring any in, she made sure to make her opinions known on what the daughter would and would not prefer. Whenever there were get-togethers of any kind, Emily would just push her daughter off on another parent without asking or checking, just so she could leave and her daughter would still have a ride back home. I think the most bizarre thing that happened was when the daycare got a new sandbox. The staff sent out an email about it, as they usually did about new equipment and things like that, and Emily was apparently personally offended by the addition of this sandbox. She insisted that her daughter would never use something so dirty, and that they shouldn't have wasted money on it even if other kids enjoyed using it. One of the staff members actually told me that Emily's daughter enjoyed the sandbox as much as any of the other children, but apparently Emily would have none of it. She went as far as to make a petition to get the sandbox removed. Like a GoFundMe for a gaming system, it got absolutely no support. After that incident, most parents just tried to avoid her. I still saw her every now and then since my youngest was good friends with her daughter, but I never relished our time together. Now, this is the second daycare related story I've seen on the subreddit, so it seems like this young age group must be prime candidates for having entitled parents. Assuming other people are going to give your kid a ride home, making sure that everything is perfectly tailored to your daughter, and then getting upset about a sandbox, and the audacity to start a petition about it. I don't know how I would have lived that down. I'm honestly surprised she didn't switch daycares after that fiasco. I just feel bad for her daughter. Hopefully, Emily will change her ways as her daughter grows up, but it's hard to see too much going away. Entitled mom demands free soda because her kid, quote, doesn't like water. One summer, I worked at a large water park in Florida. I wasn't a lifeguard, so most of the rotations I did were at various counter service restaurants and food stands in the park. Since this was a big tourist spot and it was always hot and humid, we sold a lot of drinks for very high prices. A bottle of water was like three or four dollars. I got plenty of grumpy customers over the course of my employment there, but I never met anyone as entitled as this particular mother. It was around three in the afternoon in August, so it was incredibly hot. Despite the park being crowded, the mid-afternoon is a lull for restaurants before the dinner rush, so there was nobody in line at my counter. I see a mother approach with two young children, neither of which look particularly happy. Kids get tired and overheated pretty easily, so it was understandable. The entitled mom, or EM, tells her kids to wait back by the path and walks up toward the counter. Entitled mom, Hi, my kids are incredibly thirsty, can I get something to drink? I reply with my usual spiel about drink prices, soda vs water, bottled vs fountain, etc. Upon hearing the prices, Entitled Mom totally balks. Those numbers just didn't seem to compute, so she asked me to repeat the prices. I tell her that sodas were $3.50 a cup and bottled beverages were $4. She just looks at me incredulously as if I personally set the prices and I personally am reaching into her wallet to pull money without her consent. EM. 
$4 for a bottle of water? Seriously? Me. I don't make the prices, unfortunately. I just have to follow them. EM. Is there anything cheaper? Me. I can give you a couple water cups for free. Most theme parks in the area will actually give you free water cups if you ask. That's one of the most valuable things I've learned while working in a few different theme parks. EM seemed unsure about this proposal, but unwilling to part with $4, ultimately agreed to the water cups. I grabbed one of the regular soda cups and reached to start pouring water from the fountain. As I was doing so, EM interrupted me. EM, oh, well, is there any chance you could just put soda in it? My kids don't really like water very much. They'd prefer soda, I think. I stopped for a second to remind her the price of the soda cup. EM, oh, come on, you already have the cup out. The machine is right there, just pour some soda in. It's not that big of a deal. My kids are really thirsty. Me, I'm happy to get you free water cups, but I'm unable to give you free soda. I'm sorry, miss. I don't make the prices. EM, but you're literally holding the soda cup. It's not that hard just to put soda in it. My kids have had a long day. I'm just trying to get them a drink. Me, again ma'am, there's nothing I can do. At this point, EM is starting to get angry. She doesn't seem to like being denied free soda. EM begins to get more confrontational. She starts accusing me of hating kids or being a horrible employee or any number of random insults that popped into her entitled brain. After a few minutes of putting up with this, she asks to speak to my manager. I'm happy to accommodate this request, so I call in my manager and I wait for the backup to arrive. My manager eventually comes over and has a lengthy discussion with EM about soda prices. The whole time, EM continues to disparage me, telling my manager how rude I was and how I was denying her service just because she had children. My manager didn't seem to buy the story, but she didn't seem to know how to get rid of the woman either. Eventually, she ended up just giving the lady a half-filled cup of soda just to make her shut up. EM stomps back towards her kids and actually drank half of the cup before even giving it to either of her children that had been so thirsty. Even if she was just using her kids as a cheap bargaining tool to get free goods, she doesn't deserve any special privileges just for having them. Theme parks like the water park in this story actually make most of their money off of concessions, especially beverages, because of how high the margins are. A cup full of soda will cost a park pennies on the dollar, but they can sell it for multiple dollars. I see this comment on a lot of my videos, but just because you popped a kid out, you aren't actually entitled to any special treatment. Just because your kid is, well, a kid, and your kid at that, it doesn't mean that they deserve any special treatment either. It seems like the entitled mom got her way this time, but at least OP didn't end up getting in any trouble, despite entitled mom's best attempts. Maybe next time this EM visits a water park, she'll be able to take responsibility for her own kids' needs instead of pawning it off on some poor, unsuspecting worker who isn't able to give her a free soda. Entitled Dad doesn't know how to take turns. I've been reading this subreddit for a while and haven't seen many stories about Entitled Dad, so I thought I'd share mine. Throughout middle and high school, I played competitive baseball. I was a pretty big kid, so hitting was one of my specialties, being stronger than a lot of kids my age. This interaction happened around my freshman year of high school. There's a small batting cage in my town, and usually it's pretty empty. They only have two cages, one slower pitching machine that threw at about 50 miles per hour, and one faster machine that threw 70 to 80 miles per hour. Since I was getting into high school, I had moved on from the slower cage and was spending time at the faster machine. I was determined to make the high school team, so I spent quite a few afternoons at the cage. One day, I head over to the cages after school. Nothing unusual there, like going to the gym for me. As I get dropped off, I see that there's a shiny, pretty new looking Mercedes SUV in the parking lot. There usually isn't anyone at the cage when I show up, and I had certainly never seen this car here before. I walk in and see a man probably in his mid-30s with a young son no older than 8 or 9 in tow. The dad is dressed like he just stepped off of a yacht. The preppy entitlement oozed from him. His son was just kind of wandering around the pro shop as Entitled Dad or ED paid for the cage tokens. At this place, each token got you 16 pitches at either of the machines. Tokens were like $2, but you could buy them cheaper if you bought more. The most popular deal was 12 tokens for $20. As I started to put on my batting gloves, I could hear that this is what ED had purchased. As ED and his son stepped away from the counter, I moved up to pay as well. As I'm handing the employee my money, I can see out of the corner of my eye that ED is hurting his kid toward the faster of the two cages. This was concerning to me on two fronts. First of all, Entitled Dad's son looked way too young to be hitting 80 mph pitches. 
Secondly, if he went to the faster cage, I would have to wait in turns to hit, and I hated waiting here. Sure enough, as I head over myself, the dad slides his first coin into the machine and his kid steps into the cage. As the kid readies himself in the batter's box, his dad is standing behind the cage netting with his arms crossed and a frown on his face. First pitch comes in, the kid misses. By a mile. Not even close. It's clear that he should be trying to hit pitches at a speed more reasonable for his age, but ED seems to have no reaction. Still just standing there, arms crossed. Second pitch comes in, swing and a miss again. Poor kid's helmet almost falls off, he's taking such a big hack. ED is still quiet. The rest of the pitches follow similarly, all big swings and misses. As the last pitch is thrown and the machine shuts off, ED finally breaks his silence. As the kid is still in the cage, ED gives him some advice on how to fix his stance and then heads toward the coin deposit box. The coin deposit box that starts the machine is by the door to the cage, which is where I'm standing, so when ED kind of pushed past me and puts in another token, I'm fairly taken aback. ED, again, come on Colton, I know you can do better. Side note, of course a guy like this would name his kid Colton. I stay just standing by the door as the machine starts up again. Clearly ED doesn't understand how turns work, but I let it slide for the time being. Machine starts up again, and it's the same story. ED's son is not even close to making contact on these pitches. Now, ED has taken his phone out and is recording his son, giving tips every now and then on how to improve. None of his tips make much sense to me, and they definitely aren't helping his son. Finally, the machine shuts off as the round is over. I reach into my pocket for a token, and as I do so, ED reaches across me to put another token in. I kind of sputter for a second, but end up saying something like, Hey man, it's my turn. I've been waiting here. ED. Sorry, my son is working in there right now. You can hit when we're done. Me. Usually when people wait, we just take turns. ED. Look, buddy, I paid for these tokens. My son is going to get his swings in. Go hit in the other cage if you want to. We're using this one. I genuinely thought he would apologize and let me hop into the cage after I said something, so I had no idea how to react to this blatant, in-your-face, middle finger kind of response. The third round goes just as well as the first two, which obviously isn't saying much. Kid is starting to get frustrated, and ED begins to show signs of irritation as well. When he reaches across me to put in the fourth token, I realize I'm not going to win this battle. Not wanting to escalate the situation any further, I figured I would hit around in the slow cage to warm up, and hopefully this kid and his jackass father would be gone by the time I was done. Nope. I finish up my round, and ED is already putting in token number six. Remember, he bought 12. I can tell the kid is starting to get really aggravated, but ED is pushing him to keep going. I get back in line by the cage door and watch this poor kid continue to fail on every single pitch. I look toward ED and sheepishly suggest that maybe his son would be better off trying the slower cage, something more for his age group, and boy was that the wrong move. ED. Stop trying to get us to leave. My son has full right to use this batting cage. I bought the tokens, and we are going to use them. Me. I know you have full right, but so do I. ED just ignores me and starts yelling at his son. None of his advice makes any sense, and this kid is just getting more frustrated by the second. When the round finishes, the kid heads toward the cage door in a dejected manner, but ED pushes in front of me, holds the door closed, and puts in another token, telling his son he better get back in the box and keep working. Kid is nearing a meltdown at this point. He clearly doesn't want to be there. ED, come on, Colton. I know you can do better than this. By the end of the seventh round, Colton had clearly had enough. He stormed out of the cage and straight back to the car. ED followed in a huff, but not before giving me a death glare on the way past. A couple days later, one of the employees told me that ED had called the place later that day to complain about me and how his son wasn't able to get any practice in. I don't know if it's just a father who wants his kid to be the next MLB star, or actually just a dude who doesn't realize that the world doesn't revolve around him. I haven't met anyone like him since, but it seemed like he fit with this sub. Now, it's first of all relieving to see an entitled parent story about a dad because I certainly get plenty of comments talking about how really these stories are about entitled moms, so it's good to mix it up in that sense. And also, as someone who played sports at a fairly high level for the majority of my youth, I can definitely say that I've encountered plenty of dads who go really hard on their kids when it comes to sports. To see a dad treat other people this way, however, that doesn't happen quite as much in my experience, but there's always going to be that one guy.
Neighbor pet sits for my family, then lies to us so that her daughter can have our cat. This happened when I was about 12. I'm 25 now, I graduated from college a couple years ago and now live in a different state, but it's not something I'll forget anytime soon. The cast are as follows. Myself, mom, dad, fairly explanatory. My sister was about six at the time. EM is entitled mom. Her kid's name is Katie, but I didn't know that until later. My family went on a roughly week-long vacation to a particularly mouse-sponsored theme park in Central Florida when I was in eighth grade. I had never been on a proper vacation like that before, so needless to say, I was really excited. Since we were going to be gone for a week, we needed someone to take care of our cat. Her name was Pineapple, Pine for short. She was around 15 at the time, so fairly old and needed to stay with someone rather than just having someone come over to our house to feed her every other day or something like that. As the trip grew closer, we hadn't been able to find a friend that was able to take her for a week. Even with being paid, it's a lot to ask for someone to add a pet to their home for a little, but we really wanted her to be with a friend and someone we trusted. With only a couple days left, my parents started to get fairly anxious and began expanding the list of people they were considering from just close friends. Finally, someone said they were willing to watch her. She wasn't strictly a neighbor as she lived a couple miles away, but I'm from a fairly rural area, so in the scheme of things, it wasn't that far off. This neighbor, as you can probably guess, is the entitled parent of the story. I'd only met her a couple times since we go to the same church, but I knew she had a young daughter, around five to six, somewhere in there, about the same age as my sister. Never had any weird interactions with them. So anyway, we go on our trip, see the castle, ride Space Mountain, all the usual stuff. I only learned this after the fact, but apparently on the last day of our trip, our neighbor, the EM pet sitting for us, had called our parents to tell them that Pineapple had run away. She had said they looked everywhere, but they didn't know what to do. My parents decided to keep it to themselves until we got back in an attempt to preserve our vacation happiness. When we returned, however, they broke the news to us. Our parents told us that Pineapple had run away and that she probably wouldn't know where to go or how to find a way home since she wasn't familiar with the area by their house and wouldn't know how to find her way to ours. Since Pineapple had already been missing for two days by the time we got back from our trip, hope was dwindling by the hour. I tried my best to help them look in the woods by EM's house and my dad spent the better part of two days a weekend looking. We tried putting up posters, but to no avail. Eventually, my dad had to go back to work, my sister and I had to go back to school, and we ended up resigning ourselves to the fact that our beloved family pet was gone forever. Fast forward about 10 years. I'm about to graduate from college, my sister is a junior in high school. One night, I get a call from my sister. We don't really talk on the phone that much in casual settings, so I knew that something is up. I figure she just needs money or something from me, so I reluctantly answer. As soon as I pick up the phone, she sounds absolutely frantic. I don't know how the conversation went down exactly as it was my sister, not me, but here's what happened. The daughter of EM will call her Katie and my sister went to the same high school being about the same age and from the same town. They weren't friends by any means, but they did know who each other was. Apparently they were at some kind of school function that night. It wasn't prom, but it was some kind of chaperone dance, the usual cringe stuff. One of my sister's friends at the time was dating Katie, daughter of EM, so they were hanging out in a group of people that night. At some point, the topic of pets came up. People were talking about how many pets they had, what kind of dogs, what color hamster, how many cats, just some general conversation. When it was Katie's turn, she told the group that she didn't have any pets, but she had a cat when she was little. Katie then turned to my sister and said something like, I actually think we adopted her from your family. I was so young that I don't really remember, but I think that's what my mom said. My sister was beyond confused. We had gotten another two cats since Pineapple, and my sister was very young when Pineapple disappeared, so the pieces didn't really slide into place yet. Sister, what, what do you mean? I don't think we've ever given up a cat or anything like that. Katie, damn, maybe I'm thinking of someone else. I'll have to ask my mom later. She added with a sigh, I miss Pineapple. Only had her for a few years, but she was such a good girl. The switch flicked in my sister's brain. Wait, wait, what did you just say? Katie, what do you mean? Sister, what did you say the name of your cat was? Katie, Pineapple. Isn't that such a cute name? Sister, my cat Pineapple went missing when I was really young. My sister then confirmed that her recollection of Pineapple matched the physical description Katie gave and the time frame lined up as well. Everything was falling into place. My sister started to get emotional and Katie had no idea what was going on. 
My sister explained what our parents had told us about Pineapple running away after some people had been cat sitting for us, and Katie told her that her mother, EM, had said that they adopted Pineapple. Katie was defensive at first, according to my sister, but she started to get angry and called her mom. This is when my sister called me and recounted the events thus far. Turns out, Entitled Mom was super evasive when Katie started asking about Pineapple. She kind of shut down, got mad at Katie, and told her that she needed to come home. My sister called our parents next, and they understandably were enraged. They called EM multiple times a minute for the next hour with no answer, no voicemail, nothing. My dad apparently wanted to go over there himself, but my mom was trying to calm him down. The next day, my mom got a brief email from EM. This is what it read. I'm so sorry about your dear pineapple. Katie was only five at the time, and she developed such a love for the cat, I couldn't bear to see them part. Your family had so many years with her, and I just wanted to make my daughter happy. I hope you can forgive me. And that was it. EM had pretended my cat disappeared because she thought that her daughter deserved her more than we did. I felt horrible for Katie. She had no idea what had happened and was absolutely heartbroken over the situation. I do believe that Pineapple lived the rest of her life happily with that family and that Katie treated her well, but I was devastated to learn how we had been lied to like that. My parents considered pressing charges, but on something that happened so long ago, they decided the best things for everyone was to just move on. Katie and my sister apparently became very good friends after this, and she ended up cutting ties with her mom when she went to college. I just can't fathom how a person could ever do something so absolutely messed up. Oh my god, this sounds like a story straight out of a TV show or something. I included this post because it's probably the most enthralled, appalled, and surprised that I've ever been about an EP story, but it's also one of the first stories that I genuinely hope is fiction. If it is fake, it's a fine example of a well-written, entertaining, insane if true type of story. Lying about a cat running away so that you can keep it? Unbelievable. It seems that everyone was lied to by one manipulative, entitled mother, even her own daughter. I look forward to someone making a movie about this or something like, Jesus Christ. Watch this video, be sure to subscribe for more daily Reddit content, drop a like if you like the video, and I will see you all tomorrow.